So, you're thinking about visiting Kings Island? Well, you're making a great choice. This park is a favorite of Katie and I, and it's almost impossible to visit this park and not have a great time. Kings Island is among North America's largest amusement parks and has an equally large amount of things to do. So sit back, relax, and dive in with me for the top 40 tips on how to have the best day at Kings Island. This video is organized in a way that splits all of the tips into three different sections. What to do before you get to the park, what to do on your way to the park, and finally, what you should do when you're at the park. After watching this video, you'll be more than prepared to have an amazing day at this beautiful amusement park. If you also enjoy doing amusement park content creation like us, be sure to stick around to the end as we have some tips for some of the best photo spots in the park. As with any amusement park, I'm going to highly recommend that you start out by looking at their website. There is a lot of great information here, and this can help you prepare even more for your visit to the park. If you enjoy this video and want to see our rankings of all the coasters and a review of the park, check the description below for the link to our playlist of videos all about Kings Island. Tip number one, visit during the week in May or June. Kings Island is an incredibly popular park, seeing an annual attendance of roughly 3 million visitors each year. If beating the crowds is the most important thing for you, then attending the park in either May or June on a weekday is a good idea. By doing this, you are ensuring that you can maximize your time at the park. If you visit any later than this, you are sure to hit crowds. However, this can be fine since Kings Island has some of the fastest operations out of any park in the Cedar Fair chain. Tip number two, check out the special events. Throughout the year, Kings Island will put on different events that are a must-see for anyone who wants to visit this park. If you want to go to the park and ride as many rides as possible, then I highly recommend visiting while Carnival event is scheduled. This event sees a large parade that takes a winding path through the park. Cedar Fair has done a great job at making this event spectacular, and I love the extra decorations that go up around the park. One of the more unforgettable events we saw was the 50th anniversary. While it may be a while till the park does anything similar to this, it was simply spectacular, and if anyone gets the opportunity to visit during a similar event in the future at Kings Island, you won't want to miss it. During the fall, Kings Island transforms for its Halloween haunt event, here, you'll find some great mazes filled with some of the best scare actors out there. Also, who wouldn't want to miss out on the amazing night ride opportunities here? Finally, there's Winterfest. The entire fountain on International Street is converted into an ice skating rink, and nearly the entire park is adorned with wonderful Christmas decorations. Surely, there's something here for everyone. Tip number three, find the right place to stay. If money is less of an issue, you really might want to consider staying at the Great Wolf Lodge. This resort is right next to the park and is almost in walking distance to the front entrance. If you get lucky, you may even be able to get a room that gives you a view of the park itself. If money is more of an issue for you, there is always the Comfort Suites and Marriott just down Kings Island Drive. Both of these hotels provide a continental breakfast and are modestly priced and are likewise located on Kings Island Drive itself. Tip number four, spend at least one or two days here. While it can get very crowded here because of how fast the operations are, you are more than likely going to be able to do everything you'd want to in about a day. Even then, with how large Kings Island is, I recommend spending at least a day and a half, if not two full days at the park. There is plenty to do here, and you won't want to miss out on a chance to get re-rides on some of your favorite rides here. When Katie and I visited, we spent three and a half days here so that we could capture as much content as possible so we could bring it to you guys. Ultimately though, within the first half day and full day, we had already gotten the chance to ride everything we wanted to. Tip number five, 
pre-purchase park entry. This tip will not only save you time, but also money. Kings Island sells their park entry tickets online for a lower price than at the gate. This will also save you time as you don't have to wait in a potentially lengthy line at the ticket booth. I would also recommend to use the website if you're interested in one of the season passes. This will save you a significant amount of time, meaning that the only thing you'll need to do is stop by the guest services booth to have your photo taken for your physical season pass. Tip number six, consider the season passes. Continuing off of the last tip, getting a season pass for Kings Island is a great choice, especially if you plan on visiting more than once. This is also a great idea if you're a coaster maniac like myself and want to visit other parks in the Cedar Fair chain. Entry to all Cedar Fair parks starts at the gold tier of passes and is a very cost-effective way to be able to visit the 11 different Cedar Fair properties around the country. For comparison's sake, a one-day ticket to Disneyland can be as much as $500, and right now, for $145, you can get unlimited visits to multiple parks along with discounts on food and souvenirs. Talk about value! If you're seriously crazy about coasters, you might want to consider the Prestige Pass, as this gets you up to two-hour early entry to Kings Island, as well as a ton more perks. This one starts at around $350. A one-day ticket to Kings Island costs roughly $45 online, so a season pass will pay for itself if you plan on spending more than three days at a park in the Cedar Fair chain. Tip number seven, consider a fast pass. Whether or not you get a fast pass is totally up to you, and for some, the price can be quite high. Fortunately, the operations at Kings Island are fast enough that you may be able to get away without needing one but there are some key rides where you might want to consider getting a single-use FastPass. For one day, a FastPass will cost around $85 as of 2024, and will allow you to skip the line on the rides listed here. As you can see, many of the more popular rides are listed here, so if you're going on a busy day, you can always go back to guest services and pick up a wristband while you're at the park. Tip number eight, consider purchasing a dining plan. Let's face it, theme park food is ridiculously expensive. If you go to almost any amusement park and purchase a meal for two, you are most likely looking at spending on average $45. I wouldn't normally complain, but some of the food you purchase at amusement parks certainly doesn't come close to being worth that much. So realistically, for two people, not including any extras or desserts, you might look at spending around $90 for food in one day if you eat breakfast beforehand. For roughly half the price, you should consider doing the dining plan. In fact, at nearly every amusement park you go to, if they offer a dining plan, you might want to consider getting it. They also offer an all season long dining plan for $109. This offers you two meals per day for the entire season at the park and will pay for itself extremely quickly. Tip number nine, download the app. Cedar Fair has done a great job at making well-designed apps for each of their parks. The Kings Island app is no exception. Available on both Android and iOS, this app is designed to help keep visitors informed during their time at the park. In the app, you can track live wait times and ride closures, show times as well as park hours, and find accessibility information. Tip number 10, wear the right trousers. It's the wrong trousers. <laughs> the wrong trousers. Don't be like Wallace here and bring the wrong trousers to the park. This is more of a general tip, but when visiting any amusement park, make sure to wear something with securable pockets. You can do either a normal pair of shorts with zip up pockets or cargo shorts. The key here is that they are zip up. If it has buttons on it, the buttons can either come undone or there can be enough of a gap that your pocketed valuables can slip out. While you really shouldn't be bringing anything important with you in your pockets on a ride, if you absolutely must, make sure they're secured. Tip number 11, bring a light jacket. The weather in Ohio during the summer can be quite variable, so it's a great idea to bring at least a light jacket. 
During the day, you can experience quite a bit of heat, so dressing light for that is especially important. Once the sun starts to set, temperatures can cool down quite quickly, so it's advisable to bring a light jacket in preparation for this. Some parks you can get away without one, but Kings Island isn't one of them. Tip number 12. Pack what you need. Katie and I usually like to bring small backpacks with us. We usually load them with everything essential for the day including things like sunscreen, a couple of small snacks, and our cameras. Beyond that, I sometimes like to bring a sweat rag just in case, and oftentimes we will bring hand sanitizer and Tylenol or ibuprofen. These are all very good things to bring to any amusement park, so be sure to bring at least one bag along with you and your group. Alright, you've got your passes, you've booked a hotel, and you've got clothes on your back. Now what? Well, I guess this makes for a great time to start making final preparations, and to start heading to the park. Oh, and don't forget the deodorant. Tip number 13. Arrive early. For those of you with season passes, you'll want to arrive super early to the park. For one thing, if you have the prestige pass, you have access to up to two hours early entry. Pass holders with a gold pass can get in one hour early. Regardless of this, it is still a best practice to get to the park as soon as you can. If the park is scheduled to open at 10 a.m., you should be there at least by 8 so you can secure a good parking spot early on. I know it's super early, but trust me, that time will fly as you wait to get into the park. Tip number 14. Enter from the north side. There are a couple ways to get into the parking lot, but one of the best things I've found is to try entering from the north side of the parking lot. The road leading to the gates for parking comes from either side, but trust me, you're much better off going in from the north. If you're driving northbound on Highway 71, make sure to exit at Kings Mills Road for the most optimal route. Tip number 15. Park near the Kings Island sign. Near the middle of the parking lot is a grassy island with the Kings Island sign. If you follow my previous two steps of advice and are early enough, you can find a close and easy parking space here. Make sure to be quick as these spots fill up fast. Tip number 16. Mark your spot. If you don't manage to be in the lucky group of 20 or so people who get to park in the spots near the sign, then make sure to take a picture near where you parked. There are light posts with numbered sections in most parts of the lot, so make sure to take note of where you're parked and take a picture, so that if you do forget later on, then you'll be able to easily find where you are parked. And finally, we've arrived at the park. This is where your knowledge will be put to the test, so I hope you've been following along so far. We're quizzing about this later. Tip number 17. Plot your course. One thing that is a really good idea to do before visiting any park is to get a general idea of what your itinerary will be throughout your day there. You can either draft up plans and write them out, or agree on what they'll be beforehand. It is really important to have a plan, even if you're only sticking to it loosely. This can help lighten the decision making required of you while you're at the park. If it's a particularly hot day, this can be a real lifesaver as you aren't having to focus too much energy on figuring out where to go next. As always, I still recommend to be flexible with your plans as ride closures, longer than expected lines, and other obstacles can arise. Tip number 18. Get wristbands for kids. This is a really good one if you're bringing kids along. Once you enter the park, head left. As noted here on the map, You'll find the height station where your kids can be given coded wristbands that will prevent them from being height checked on every ride they want to go on. This seriously saves a lot of headache as it can help you more properly plan for what rides they can and can't ride. Tip number 19. Check out Planet Snoopy. Kings Island is home to the award-winning Planet Snoopy. This area is full of a few coasters, a large selection of flat rides, and fun activities for the whole family. A younger child will fit right in here, and there should be plenty to do to keep them entertained. Just don't forget to check around the park to see what else they are tall enough to do. Tip number 20. Head straight to Area 72. For everyone else visiting the park, you want to head straight to Area 72. 
Located southeast of the park entrance, this area holds two rides which often have some of the longest wait times in the park. It's not uncommon for both Flight of Fear and Orion to have lines in excess of an hour wait, so make sure to hit these early. This leads us right into the next tip. In my opinion, you are better off riding Flight of Fear first since its line moves the slowest. Orion will often have at least three or four trains on its course, which the ride operators are able to load very quickly. Tip number 21, purchase an all day locker. Rides such as Flight of Fear, Orion, Mystic Timbers, and Banshee lack storage bins on their ride platforms. You are required to get a locker to store your belongings for each of these. As you head towards Flight of Fear and Orion, Area 72 has a locker area where you'll want to store your belongings. Unless this is all you're planning on riding, do not buy the one-time use lockers. It is significantly cheaper to get the all-day locker. By doing this, you pay one price and get to move your stuff from one locker to another throughout the day. Tip number 22. Avoid this restroom. Near the front entrance on the right side is the first restroom you will come across. I'm sure you may have to go really badly, but do yourself a favor and avoid this one. At least in the men's room, there is only one actual toilet and these facilities are the least clean ones in the entire park. You can find the next restroom either at Fest House or near Diamondback. Tip number 23, check the app for wait times. Remember how I recommended that you download the app earlier? Well, here's one way it will come in handy, checking the wait times. Kings Island does a really good job at keeping these up to date, so make sure to keep a close eye on it to see how long of a line that next coaster has. If the line is too long, you can always skip it and move on to the next. Tip number 24, know which rides have the longest lines. So which ones do? Well, I already mentioned Flight of Fear and Orion. Next, some of the other rides are Diamondback, Backlot Stunt Coaster, Antique Autos, Race for Your Life Charlie Brown, and finally, Whitewater Canyon. Mystic Timbers and Adventure Express can sometimes get longer lines, but the ones previously mentioned often have the longest ones in the park. If cooling down on a water ride is your goal, hit up Congo Falls in the Action Zone. This ride is sure to get you soaked and is almost always a walk-on. Tip number 25, now you need to know which rides are the best in the park and which ones are the most popular. This one is subjective, but some of the best rides in the park are Orion, Banshee, Diamondback, Mystic Timbers, The Beast. I could keep going. This park has an incredible coaster lineup. Generally speaking, if it's a large coaster at Kings Island, it's a good ride. Tip number 26, take advantage of Soak City hours. If you're like me and don't often visit water parks, then this is your opportunity to take advantage of the rest of the people who do. Soak City generally stays open until 7 p.m. This means that a large portion of the crowd will be focused on the water park up until this time. It is really important to try to get on the rides with some of the potential for the longest lines before 7 p.m. Once Soak City closes for the day, the lines at most of the rides get much longer and you'll find yourself caught in a crowd that will feel like it came out of nowhere. Tip number 27, ride everything multiple times. By planning out your route and riding everything as quickly as possible, you'll be spared plenty of time to be able to get re-rides on most of your favorite rides. The last time Katie and I went to the park, we were able to conquer just about everything within three quarters of the day. This allowed us a chance to re-ride multiple rides and still catch some of the events. Tip number 28, check out the live shows. Dotted all around the park are different live performances that you won't want to miss. There's the Kings Island Theater near International Street that has great air conditioning and puts on a plethora of wonderful shows. You can find performances inside a fest house. And finally, there's Rivertown, which often has live music being played right underneath Diamondback. If you want to make your visit to this park special and try out everything, then seeing these live events is definitely worth it. Tip number 29, ride the train for a nice break. Once you've gotten to the middle of your day at the park, you may be thinking, it'd be a great time to take a break. If this is the case, then why not check out the train? The entrances for this are located in Rivertown and in Soak City, 
and can provide either a great leisurely activity or serve as a quicker way to get from the amusement park to the water park. For the photography-minded viewers out there, this train ride can also provide some great views of Diamondback and Mystic Timbers that you won't be able to get anywhere else, so be sure to check it out. Tip number 30. Know where the best places to eat are. There are several restaurants dotted throughout the park, and obviously everyone has their preferences on what they like, but there are a few key restaurants I'd recommend checking out while you're here. For a great lunch option, you have Enrique's. This is just a knockoff Chipotle with a lot of the same ingredients. Make sure to eat light here so you don't get an upset stomach. Next, we have the Coney Barbecue, and on the nearly opposite side of the park, the Miami River Brew House. Coney Barbecue is a great option for slightly larger meals that can actually end up being decently healthy. It's a similar tale over at Miami River Brew House. This restaurant serves salads and burgers and just about everything else you'd expect at an amusement park. The good air conditioning and slightly quieter environment here make for a great way to escape from all the noise for a little while. Tip number 31. Try the local staple, the Cincinnati Chili. If you're in Cincinnati, it's almost a sin to not try out the local staple food, chili. Found at Skyline Chili in the Coney Mall, this restaurant serves the iconic Cincinnati delicacy. This chili is locally famous and locally loved, so be sure to stop by and try some. You can't miss it. Tip number 32. Don't skimp out on the blue ice cream. Some people call it blue ice cream, some call it a smurf cone. Whatever you call it, this Kings Island ice cream flavor has grown to be so popular that it was even adopted into Cincinnati culture. You can find this delectable treat in the ice cream zone located in the action zone section of the park. Tip number 33. Know where the best gift shops are located. Fortunately, Kings Island has a ton of gift shops dotted all around the park, so if there's something specific you've got your eyes on, you most likely won't have to worry too much about it being in short supply. Some of the best gift shops located in the park are the Diamondback Trading Post, Kings Island Collections, and the Emporium, both on International Street, and finally, the little shop located on the walkway to Area 72. All of these gift shops have all the nano coasters and park apparel you could ever wish for, and more. Tip number 34. Take shortcuts. Did you know that Fest House not only makes for a great restaurant, but an even better shortcut? You see, the walkway from International Street to the Action Zone and Adventure Port is somewhat narrow and can get overloaded quickly. If you find yourself getting stuck in crowds near these areas, why not consider cutting through Fest House? This building has doors located on its northern and southern facades, which make for a great and lesser known way to cut past crowds. Tip number 35. Let's discuss where some of the best seats are for each ride. Now, as a certified coaster maniac, you need to ride each ride on the best seats. Fortunately, this is a fairly easy thing to figure out at Kings Island. Both Racer and The Beast feature the same trains that have three rows of two across seating in each car. The front row on each ride is great, but it is also a good idea to consider riding in row two for these. Row 2 is the only row on each car that isn't a wheel seat, meaning that you'll be feeling less of the imperfections right underneath you. The Beast is slightly exempt from this, as there really is no other row than the front. There is nothing quite like a front row ride at night on the Beast. For rides like Banshee, Orion, Diamondback, Mystic Timbers, make sure to ride in the front two or the back two rows. On Diamondback in particular, the most important thing to keep in mind is that you want a wing seat. These seats are located on the outer edge and provide for the best overall experience. Plus, if you're in the back row and in a wing seat, you'll get a little wet from the final splashdown. Orion is especially a good ride to experience in the back row, as the last few airtime hills really launch you out of your seat here. Finally, there's the bat. This ride is a certified front row ride. Tip number 36, check out the best night rides. Look, there's no question about it. 
Kings Island is home to the best night rides out there. You can't really beat the beast in this category. However, all of the other rides like Banshee, Bat, Mystic Timbers, Orion, and Diamondback all provide incredibly strong night rides as well. Without a doubt, the beast is the best one there. There is nothing quite like roaring through the pitch black forest at 50 miles per hour. If you're a Disney princess like I am, then you might find yourself getting incredibly lucky. On one of our night rides of the beast, we were surrounded by fireflies on all sides throughout most of the ride's course. This dazzling display of flickering light while going as fast as we were was like nothing I've ever experienced before. It felt straight out of a movie. Tip number 37, prepare for the fireworks show. As a result of its proximity to some of the rides, many coasters actually closed down during the fireworks show. In fact, because of how popular of a night ride the beast is, Kings Island will actually close off the line for it 15 minutes prior to the fireworks show. Obviously, this is to respect the time of the ride ops. If you want to get the chance to secure a night ride on this wooden behemoth and potentially score the last train of the night, be sure to prepare by getting here before the fireworks show closes it down. Tip number 38. Where are the best fireworks viewing spots? If you haven't visited Kings Island before and you want to actually view the fireworks show, then there really is only one good place to go see it, right in front of the International Street Fountain. Unless you prepare yourself well ahead of time, you won't be able to get a good spot, so make sure to get there early. From this vantage point, you can see the fireworks as well as the light show that is put on all around International Street. This is a sight to behold and one of the reasons behind me recommending that you spend multiple days here. You can either prioritize getting a night ride on something, or get a great spot to view the fireworks. Either way, you can't go wrong with whichever choice you make. Tip number 39, go up the Eiffel Tower. Our penultimate tip focuses on the weenie of Kings Island. Before you start laughing, that's actually the technical term for what the Eiffel Tower is. It's a large landmark that's visible from almost anywhere inside the park. In actual theme park design, it is called a weenie. Man, Kings Island sure does have a large weenie. Okay, okay moving on. Inside the replica Eiffel Tower is an elevator. If you take this elevator, you can go up to the observation platform located near the top of the tower. As gets mentioned by nearly everyone else who talks about it, you can stay up here as long as you'd like, so be sure to take in the view. It's one of the best in the whole park. Tip number 40, find the best photo spots. Continuing off of the last tip, one of the first great spots for taking photos is in the Eiffel Tower. From here, you get an unparalleled view of the park and some amazing photo opportunities. There are also several other spots around the park that make for great places to get photos. Spots like the walkway to Whitewater Canyon, this walkway in the Coney Mall, second to last, this spot between the Bat and Banshee, and finally, this spot near the splashdown of Diamondback. There are many other places you can go to get awesome photos, such as the train, but these were some of my favorites. I hope you can tell just how enthusiastic I am about Kings Island. When it comes to regional amusement parks, this is the cream of the crop. They don't get much better than it. From the incredible ride collection to the awesome staff and the amazing events they put on, Kings Island has something for just about everyone. As a coaster enthusiast, or heck, even a general thrill seeker, this Ohio-based amusement park is one that you can't pass up. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like and comment below and hit that bell icon. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters, Nathan Martin and Future Collective. $1 a month helps me bring even more content to you guys, and I even have some exclusive content coming, so check it out. Check the description below to find links to the rest of our pages. 
Thanks for watching the video and ride on, Coaster Maniacs.